Okay, I would like to continue. Um, pretty happy to see all three enthusiastic talking. I don't know if it's actually discussion because I don't speak Swedish, but I please. Yeah, how is this working for you guys? Because I added this the discussions because otherwise it's just an information dump, and now you kind of get to talk together. Like, do you get what he's saying? Well, not really. You can kind of figure it out. Hopefully, does it help you to stay a bit more alert and awake? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay, great. So then I know this is not. Uh, Totally useless. <coughs> so, um, yeah, are there any, any comments you had or things like questions maybe about it? Uh, don't be shy. If you have a question, then probably someone else has too. So you're helping out your classmates. Otherwise, you can also ask me later. And besides, all of this is optional <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, okay, so so far, I think this has been pretty hands on in a way, like directly applicable. Now we're getting to the academical levels, the stuff you get in art school. So this becomes a bit less useful to you, I'm afraid. And uh, it's totally okay if you can't, your mind kind of wanders off and you think, I'm, I'm not so sure about this anymore, especially stage five. <coughs> so, um, what the? I don't remember what I was going to say with this. So have you seen this game? I'm sure it'll make sense why I added this later. It's called Thomas Was Alone. Um, well maybe I should add the sound to it. But Thomas noted there was no real danger in missing it. The world didn't want him to fail here. It was pushing him, but gently. <laughs> So this is clearly not very realistic. Um, there's a lot of backstory to this character. This all seems um, a little dangerous. The world was not and trusted. Speaking as someone, but the common response is, "Damn you for making me feel for stupid square blocks." Mm -hmm. this game. Uh, so, uh, so I think this is a pretty good example of like a stage three game, I would say, in a way. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe it's also stage two. We can talk about that. And now something went wrong. And I have to start again. Yeah, no, no, I don't need that. Okay. Go. Stage four. So the interview, well, it's not like it's a useless interview, but it's so full of technical mumbo jumbo. Well,. Not that, but I, I'm, I'm afraid, I'm, I'm already afraid I'm going to lose you with what, I, what the insights are, let alone with the interview that led to the insights. So I'm just going to skip that and jump straight through what you're supposed to understand from them. Okay? And like I said, it's okay if you kind of lose me um, along the way. So this is like what, what he had to say about this. Um, stage four brings that an awareness of the social contact that a painting reflects. Oh no, wait, wait a second, that's not what it reads. An awareness of the social contact of a painting reflects the realization that the interpretation of a painting is a social creation. Okay, let's see, that's what I mean with expansive words. Um, so, so uh, okay, stage three, you're aware of social norms, you're aware they might be different, you're aware that the experience might be different, so then when you become aware of that you're aware of that, then you become aware that, wait a minute, so this interpretation is purely made by whatever my social norms are. Still with me? Mm -hmm. That's what it says, in a bit more shorter and complicated terms, I guess. And it can exist only in a community of viewers. Only if you have a community of people with social norms, you can have interpretations of a painting. That's the interpretive part. So the, the you know, like look look at the the pictures of Muhammad problems, right? In another culture, they have different social norms, so they interpret those pictures very differently from the way that the Danish people interpret them. Or well, not just the Danish, because there's also Muslims in Denmark, but like the moderate people, or the I don't even know if that's a fair judgment in a way. Like I don't want to get into that, but you know how how this deep the hole goes. Um, <coughs> Just as words can have meaning only in a linguistic community. Okay, so look at this. Painting, painting, viewers, right? The awareness, blah, 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 blah. 
I can easily replace this <coughs> with saying the social content of a game reflects the realization that the interpretation of the game is a social creation that can only exist in a community of gamers. It works the same way, right? It works just as well. So the game might have an appeal in this country, but not in the other. I recently heard that games in which you shoot the Taliban are very popular in Arabic countries for people who kind of wish there was no Taliban there. You know, so. Uh, so this is like uh, when, uh, when uh, World War II shooters are released in Germany and they remove all the swastikas. Yeah, well, that you could say, well, that's also because the law makes them. But you could say, why does the law make them do that? And you could say, well, because we do not want any neo Nazis in our country. So, yeah, yeah, that, that's, I think, is a decent uh, example, yeah. So the meaning of a work no longer, but this is, well, but this goes a bit about something else. But this is related, definitely. Um, we'd have to think about that a bit more later. But uh, the meaning of a work, therefore, is no longer just what, the, what you experience. Sorry, Billy, because uh, he literally just said to me, like, hey, for me, if I experience something, that's good. Which is also fine, you know, if that's what you want. But for stage four, if you want to think like that, then that's not enough. You need more. You need to be able to discuss what can be said about it in a discursive way. Well, that's just like, in a, like having reasonable discussions with clear terms by a number of people. It's a public meaning, so it's not just your opinion, man, anymore. It's part of a complex historical web of meanings that we call an art tradition. Games also have art traditions. We have a whole retro pixel thing, right? We have a whole genre that's also kind of an art tradition. Like, there's, like this is a roguelike, in the tradition of roguelike, so these are procedurally gen like, there's all kinds of stuff like that. Um, so, so that's kind of, so stage four, if you compare it to stage three, right? Looking at a painting means that you have a subjective interpretation at the individual level. And then stage four is that you say, no, I need to approach it from the whole social and public context. I need to go beyond my point of view. I'm not saying you have to do this. I'm saying this is what that stage demands of you in a way, if you want to approach it that way. So you have to acknowledge the significance of the art world in which paintings, replaced with games in your head, have meaning. So there's this gaming community for which games have this meaning. I don't know, maybe eSports. Maybe that's StarCraft community. Maybe, you know, I'm sure there are like certain niches as well. LARPing is a community. You have to respect the history of LARPing if you want to join them. <coughs> so another consequence, this is a bit weird. Um, is that you have this awareness how important the medium itself has is for the expressiveness of the painting. So in, in the beginning we said, well, it doesn't have to be realistic, and now I'm saying this, it is? Well, no, no, the medium itself. Because the thing is, we have to be able to discuss the painting or the game. But if it's just my opinion, man, and your opinion, man, we can't discuss anything. But what we can discuss is the technical execution. Right, that's the thing we can objectively say. Well, this is clearly well executed because it runs smoothly. In that sense, it's technically like. So that's important that you have those terms to discuss them. So, yeah, no, technical execution, right there. So a painting doesn't consist of ideas and feelings in some disembodied subjective way, but of the actual paint itself and the particular way it is handled. Oh, something went wrong here, but okay. In a sense, the medium is the painting. If the painting is expressive, then the expressiveness must be found as a quality or construction of, or quali of, quali <coughs> or a construction of qualities in the medium. Okay, uh, I, I get lost in a sentence myself, so don't worry if you are. So I al already underlined the painting bits. Boom. A game consists not so much of blah, 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 subjective, but of the actual gameplay itself, yeah. No? And the particular way it handles, right? How smooth is the gameplay? In a sense, the medium is the game. If the game is expressive by, well, you can also could say immersive, like how much can I jump into the game, then this must be found as a quality or construction of qualities of the medium. You can see a few of you zoning out because it seems to be a bit too much. <laughs> That's okay. Right, so it's, it becomes important, but good technique is not the goal. 
So that's the whole weird, like if you ever seen those contemporary art things and it's like, these are shitly executed. Yeah, because it's not the goal. But as long as they express the intent, blah, blah, blah. That's because people reach this stage of talking about art. So good, yeah, good depends on the depicted meaning of the artwork. And that's very different from stage two, love of realism. So, um, well, one thing too we could say, well, games are the medium of interactivity. We already established that, right? It's about the feedback loop and stuff. So we can think of interactive technique, because graphics are not interactive technique so much, unless we mean visual communication. So, so there's this concept of juiciness. Maybe you've heard of it. Juice up your interaction. And there's like this debate on whether it's good or bad. It's like giving these rich, over-the-top feedback things so you feel that it's not just a little <coughs> punish, but like over, you know, over-the-top um, over effect for a little button push. You push a button and suddenly, kaboom, the world explodes. That's juiciness. Okay, so stage five becomes even worse. Uh, that's, um, we're reaching critical levels of academic masturbation here, so we shouldn't <laughs> go too deep into this. Yes, I can say that. You're all adults here. Yeah. Um, so stage of five, at least I think this is what stage five is, because the problem is I don't quite get it myself. So I'm either I'm not there yet, or there's a small problem, because he himself said there's a bit of controversy in stage five. Um, so it's like, okay, so artwork stimulates questions in your mind about what the world is or what it could be, about well, how we can be together. And it means it adds and challenges your developed perceptions. The way you perceive the world. There's the way the world is, maybe, but there's also the way you interpret that. So it, it challenges that. So there's this question like, what does a, but, well, what, you might go like this at this point, but what does a work of art have to say about art itself and about my perception of it and so forth? And uh, yeah, the, the difference is extremely subtle and, and nuanced and I have trouble distinguishing it myself. The thing is, um, for the last 100, 120 years, there's been this concept in art called art for art's sake. I'm sure you've heard that, right? And ever since we started talking about art in that way, it's become a big problem in a way, because if it, oh, it's only for art's sake, then what makes it connect to the rest of the world? And we've been struggling with that theoretically for uh, like, over 100 years. And I think that stage five is probably a, a, an attempt because he's trying to discuss what is autonomy in art. That was the main, game, uh, the main aim of this paper, which is that. We don't have to worry about any of that, right? I'm just showing this to you to, I'll probably lose all of you, but also just to say it's, it's there. Um, yeah, so it's like, this is the main of academic, what is art? It's way beyond the scope of this class, right? You just have to create a novel interaction with a good game, right? Uh, as long as you're beyond just stage two, and I'm not saying you can't appreciate a game at stage two, that's fine. As long as you're capable of doing stage three, maybe on occasion stage four, if you, you know, want to go for it, you don't have to. We, we're happy, because like I said, I think stage three makes you better for people in general, because you're more empathic. Now, it's not completely worth to think about games like this, like, have you heard of The Mountain? No? It's an indie game. This is, like, this is a, a screenshot from a uh, paper. Why critics love the mountain, but Steam users are calling it worthless. And then like, look at the first lines there. According to the Atlantic, mountain invites you to experience the chasm between you, your own subjectivity, and the unfathomable experience of something else. It hit it, like, this is, this is just art crit lingo, right? What does this even mean? Um, so this is basically, this game, is aimed at people who like to think about things at stage five. And if you want to buy a game because you want to just have fun, stage two, of course you're going to hate this game. It's not your fault. It's not the game maker's fault either. It's just like miscommunication there, right? So the art critic line of thought might be, well, what does this game do to forward the meaning of games? What does it innovate? What does it probe any interesting questions about games? Does it do anything novel that I have never seen in other games, right? So they, stage four or five, you kind of, you kind of see some interesting, or you, it's, you look for the interesting bits in the mountain. Because that is almost the game for you, looking for those bits. That's why you go look at art. Because you want to look for the bits. Stage three, something went wrong there. 
Do I actually enjoy playing this game? No? Then it sucks. They're bored to death by the game. And as you see, like, I, I wouldn't say any of them is wrong here, right? It's just the way you look at it. And uh, I think the only thing you can take away for this is that you have to make a choice where you're going with your game. For who are you making it? And you have to make it clear to us as teachers what, for who you were making this game, right? Because then that's the only way we can judge if you do it properly or not. Okay, it's almost done, this part. And then we'll have a break. And then we'll continue with some other stuff that I think Simon handled before. I'm not quite sure. And we'll talk about it some more. So, so nah, the point is, these stages don't always work together nicely. You have to make a trade-off. And um, you know what's enjoyable, because maybe you want to make a non-enjoyable game, but it has a point to make about it. I think, personally, Papers, Please is very uh, It's engaging, but I wouldn't make it a, a consider it a, a game that cheers me up in any way. Oh, right? Is that a game where you? You play a bureaucrat who, who has people, that's people yeah, come in. Yeah, where you become in line and you yeah. have to see if they actually have the documents. Yeah, there. you have to play a bureaucrat and you have to be oh. brutal, brutal about it. <laughs> and it's, no. uh, and it's, I think the thing about it is that it's really good at making you, because if you don't play that game, you might think, well, how could anyone be so cruel to other people? And then you play the game and like, yeah, well, you have no choice. That's the system. So it makes you experience and empathize with them, stage three at least, right? That makes it a, face, a very good stage 3 game. But it's also very engaging, so it's also a very good stage 2 game. It's very well executed. I think Papers, Please is a masterpiece, personally. And we can go on like this. So, just to summarize everything. Stage 1, you're naive, you have egocentric judgment. And egocentric isn't bad, it's just like, that's the whole world to you. And it's only of what you directly see. Pretty dress, pretty shoes, pretty colors. Boom. Stage two, you conform to social norms because you're aware of them, which is an incredible achievement, and we somehow manage to do that every time we grow up, when humans become eight. And your theme is just like whatever you see. Ugly woman, ugly painting. Right? Uh, depressing game, depressing bad game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So stage three, your awareness of the difference in subjective experience, and the theme can be abstractly represented and you can combine separate elements into a thematic whole. I think that would be quite cool to think about in, say, Creatures of Magic, how you can combine the themes or something, or I think other games also in the, in the proposals can do something with that. So stage four, becoming aware of the social context and the traditions. So in what game tradition do you want to put your game, if, if at all? You can also say, well, we don't really think about that, right? This is an optional theory in a way. And that it's important to understand the medium itself. So you can say, well, did you serve the intended expression in the way you handled it? It doesn't have to be beautiful, but did it serve what you were going for? Maybe pixels are better than. Maybe crappy graphics are actually better than. And five is kind of trying to integrate this all together into this high level of self-awareness. And then asking questions about your own perceptions and the values you have towards games. Yes? I was just thinking about, um, maybe you don't agree, but uh, a, a big thing I think is different between art and games is uh, uh, in art you often have um, very big, um, it's very important uh, how it's made. Okay? If, if uh, the painter was, I don't know, hanging upside down in his toes shooting with a paper gun, that's, <laughs> uh, that's yeah, like sure, sure. adding a lot of things to the actual painting, but um, I would say no one cares how you made the game. Uh, well, I disagree with that. You do? I, I, I do, mean, I do. I'm, 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 I, it's okay if you don't care about that, but uh, uh, it's not okay. Um, but for me, when I, like, you know the first roller coaster Tycoon game? Yeah, it's made in assembly. Right? Yeah. yeah. To me, that adds a lot, in a way, to my thoughts about that game. Like, whoa. This guy wrote on his own, completely in assembly. That's amazing. <coughs> we, we, as human beings, value effort, right? We value people putting in love and care into what they make. Um, and, well... But and it's, not, it's not as important. No, well, yeah. Well, that's the thing you could debate. Again, that's a social norm in a way. So, so... Um, that's well, interesting. I'm provoking discussion. This is good. I like I like your feedback. Thanks. Um, but um, I kind of lost track of thought here. 
Yeah. I would, uh, I would like it to be more important and, you know... Ac and academic so nonsense? No, no more, <laughs> like yeah, how it's made, because I, I think it's really... Um, I mean, that's uh, <laughs> kind of half the fun uh, with yeah, the sure. games, I think, because there's so many uh, different game engines and uh, programming languages. And yeah. For example, Papers, Please is made in, in a lang new language called Haxi, which is... Yeah. Uh, um, a <coughs> derivative from, from Flash. Yeah, yeah. So, um, that the, I think that's... Um, can I can I interrupt you for a second? I mean, uh, it's great feedback you're giving here. But uh, so so can I? This is a good summary. To say you would like it to matter. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it already does. It's just as because people don't actually discuss games at this level, they don't see it matters. But you can go back all the way to the original games and see it actually matters. Um, I didn't say this at the beginning, but I think the whole question of can games be art is a totally wrong question. Because the answer is, of course it can. Because games are a medium, and any medium can be art. And people often, without realizing, substitute the question to, do I know of a game that I consider art? Or do I you know, is it like a painting? Because painting, I don't know what art is. Because if you want to answer this, you want to say, what is art? Or do you think you do? And then you say, well, I know paintings are art. Are, are games paintings? No, so they're not art. So that's how people can answer no to that. And I say, no, any medium can express art. So games could be art. Um, but it requires a certain way of looking at games to appreciate them as art. And it requires a certain way of knowing games to appreciate them as art. Because, like, let's take roguelikes. You know what roguelikes are? They're using text to depict the graphics. Monophones, because they're really old on terminals. It, it kind of requires a certain level of getting over that hurdle to learn to appreciate them. So I would say, well, that's a niche. You have to learn the traditions and to have to learn the technique before you can even say it's good or bad. Before that, it's just mumbo jumbo. And it doesn't have to mean that it's a bad game because like, okay, I'm half Chinese, but I don't speak Chinese. If you would drop me in China, I would not know the difference between Chinese, Chinese words, but nonsensically constructed or stuff that just sounds Chinese. It's all the same to me. So I cannot possibly say if that's a good or bad sentence. And I think it's the same thing with art. And that's also part of why I want you guys to think about this. Um, yeah. And, uh, and I do so because I do think games are a worthwhile medium to think about. Um. I actually think it's, uh, games are the best art in games. Yeah? Um, <coughs> I'm I, I don't want to have a discussion about what the best art is, to be honest, <laughs> but um, you're, you're free to think that. Because they, they have all the things that um, they, they like um, mash up between um, mm. so many different art forms. They combine previous art forms. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, see, you, we could say they have a lot of potential. Because <laughs> I don't know, because the thing is also, do, do, how much do people try to make it art and how often and how do they try it? Because quite often, like, I want to make art, and it's just like, well, whatever I think art is, but it might actually be terrible <laughs> uh, or, or wrong. So, uh, like, I think art is a lot of pretentiousness, then they make a game that's very pretentious, but it doesn't actually make it art. You know, those kind of problems. Like, a lot of indie games are, sorry to say, they are actually pretentious instead of arty, but some of them are pretentious, but actual good art. So, it's like, this is a difficult discussion. And, uh, and you know, you have to realize, especially computer games are very young. The serious analysis of games is also only, you know, Johan Huizinga. I think Simon mentioned him. Whereas all other mediums, they have like centuries, well, except for film and radio, but everything else, centuries of stuff going before it. <coughs> so they have a very well established art criticism and art crowd and all that stuff. So that all just has to be developed. But you know, when photographs were new, people said that's not art. It took about 100 years for that to be accepted. So I think we're already doing pretty well after 20, 30 years with games. Um, right, so that's my art bachelor talking. <laughs> um, and again, this is not necessary in any way for your passing this course. It's just because I think it's, well, educational in general. So, discuss it. Nah, I don't discuss You know what? Have a break. And then maybe in the break you can discuss it, come to me, we can keep talking about this. And uh, after the break we'll have some other stuff. Yeah? Yeah.